So we talk about intermolecular bonding. And that's the, you know, the, 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 the forces of attraction that keep molecules together to help them to form liquids and solids. And if the force of attraction between the two molecules is such that it's not very strong and there's enough energy in the room to keep them apart and not enough pressure to squeeze them together, they'll form a gas. So you see, the states of matter for various types of chemical compounds really depends on the not just the intermolecular bonding strength, but also the pressure and the temperature that this substance is found in, in its environment. And so we can take a substance, like carbon dioxide for instance, and then see how carbon dioxide as a compound responds under various pressures versus changes in temperature. Now, that gives us something called a phase diagram. Now, phase diagrams are actually, well, this is a real standard look to a phase diagram. You kind of make a little bit of a W here, and then you make a line going off to the right, lean it this way, in terms of pressure and temperature, solid, liquid, gas, and you've got yourself a phase diagram for virtually almost every type of compound that's found uh, on the planet. Except water's a little bit different, and we'll do water right after carbon dioxide here. So now look. If we just go to what we understand to be a normal atmospheric pressure, which is about one atmosphere, right? Kind of standard for sea level and, uh, and, and, and anything that's just above sea level, even up to about a thousand meters or so, it's going to be very close to about one atmosphere of pressure. So if we have carbon dioxide at one atmosphere of pressure and it's very, very, very cold, like it's in the negatives and degrees Celsius, well, that carbon dioxide is going to be a solid because even if uh, carbon dioxide doesn't like to really be a solid, when it's really, really cold, you're going to be able to make those molecules have intermolecular forces that will be appreciable in terms of sticking them to each other together. <laughs> so what we get at about one atmosphere and very, very cold, like minus 100 degrees Celsius, is carbon dioxide in the solid state down here. But as we keep it at one atmosphere of pressure, but start to warm up the CO2, we get to a point where it goes from, at one atmosphere, at minus 78 degrees Celsius, from a solid right to a gas, without even going through the liquid phase. And that's called sublimation. And here's what you know, that there is something called dry ice. And dry ice is solid carbon dioxide. And that dry ice, has to be kept in an environment that's a lot lower than minus 78 degrees Celsius to keep it as a solid because if you take it out and put it at room temperature at one atmosphere of pressure it's going to start to warm up and once it starts to warm up and hits minus 78 as a temperature it's going to undergo sublimation and go from a solid to a gas where it remains a gas up into normal up here uh, temperatures at room temperature around 25 degrees Celsius CO2 would be a gas Right. Now, how could you actually keep it as a solid longer if you start to warm it up? Well, you'd have to apply pressure on that, on that solid to not allow it to enter the vapor phase, right? So if we increase the pressure and then come across in temperature, what will happen? Well, let's take it up to about five atmospheres, or 5.1 specifically, atmospheres of pressure. So five times normal atmospheric pressure. We're squeezing down on that CO2 sample. But now we're starting to warm it up from minus 100. Well, it gets to 78, but it still stays a solid. Because even if it's at its normal sublimation point, it's not going to sublimate because it's under pressure. It's at 5.1 atmospheres. So oh, it keeps going, keeps going, keeps going. Guess what we hit? We hit a point on this diagram where we have an intersection of solid, liquid, and gaseous phase right there. And when you hit that point right there on any phase diagram, you got yourself something called the triple point for that substance. The triple point, which is pretty cool, which means that at that temperature, which is minus 56 degrees Celsius for CO2 and 5.1 atmospheres, CO2 exists and exists completely at equilibrium in all three of its states, solid, liquid, and gas. So you would have, in that sample, if it was in an enclosure, you would have liquid carbon dioxide, solid carbon dioxide, and solid all interchanging amongst itself at that time. All three phases existing. Okay. And then, if you continued, of course, to take that um, uh, carbon dioxide at 5.1 atmospheres and continue to warm it up, 
eventually, even if it's under pressure, but you're heating it so much, it turns into a gas and turns into a vapor in here. Now, if you then take a sample of CO2, and let's go all the way up to 73 atmospheres of pressure. That's a lot of pressure that you're applying to a sample of CO2. Now, you're going to keep it into a solid state for a lot longer. So instead of minus 56, where it would normally, well not normally, but at the triple point, it would be 5.1 before you could turn it into a liquid. And that's how many atmospheres you need before you, you, need, you can take CO2 and turn it into a liquid. You need 5.1 atmospheres applied to be able to have a liquid CO2. Liquid carbon dioxide does exist. If you have it at 73, you can go right across here and you would have to surpass 56 degrees Celsius because now, see at minus 56 degrees Celsius, you're still under enormous pressure so you're keeping it in the solid state for longer, but then it will eventually, as you warm it up, pass into a liquid. And then what happens? Well, you can actually then keep heating it, keep heating it, keep heating it, even though the pressure is enormous on it, it's finally going to free itself from each other at the high, high temperatures, uh, from each other's, from the intermolecular bonds between each molecule that free themselves from each other. And what you're going to get is a point where we reach something called the critical point. Now that critical point is made up of, well, it's, it's, it's a critical point because it's made from the critical temperature, which happens to be 31 degrees Celsius for CO2, and the critical pressure, which is 73 atmospheres. Now, what does that mean? It means this. Once you pass that critical point for 30, uh, at 31 degrees Celsius for CO2 at 73 atmospheres of pressure, the CO2 goes from being a liquid, and, and now it's, it's turning into a gas, but the pressure is trying to keep it a, as a liquid, but you know, it's going to turn into this fluidy thing, bleh, and then it's going to turn into a gas. And now, it doesn't matter what happens when you are CO2 and you are above 31 degrees Celsius, you cannot be turned back into a liquid or a solid, no matter how much pressure is applied. That critical temperature is the point at which vaporization occurs and you cannot turn that vapor back into a solid no matter how much pressure is applied. And the critical pressure is that point that you can actually make liquid and liquefy, undergo liquefaction of that chemical at the critical temperature. So that critical point right there is really where the phase diagram kind of ends because it doesn't continue up into here, although you might think it could. It really doesn't. So that's CO2. Now let's do one for water. 